Can you guys see my screen? All right. So what, what can you see? Okay. All right. All right. So um, those are the things that we will be covering. So you know I told you guys before you start writing code for electronics, before you start writing code, first of all, you need to understand the basics of what you want to do because as an embedded system designer or programmer or an engineer you, you are supposed to understand the hardware part even if you want to specialize as a firmware developer you need to understand the electronics part of it because you cannot understand you cannot write code for the system that you don't know how it works so you need to understand the system first of all which is the hardware part you need to understand the system before you can be able to write code for the system is that clear all right so now uh please please if you're not if you're not talking you can meet your your speaker or your mic sorry you can meet your mic if you're not talking so um now we want to go through a series of things maybe let's see how, how far we can go today now the first one is introduction to electronic circuit design then after that we try to know how many of these components you can go through because before you start using them to design a circuit first of all you need to understand how the components what is their working principle what is their type how you can use them in the circuit So, so now, now to design an electronic circuit, first of all, you need to understand and know the basics of the electronic building block, the electronic circuit building block. That is the most important thing. That the building block, those are the components that you need to design a circuit. Say you want to design a simple circuit where you can. Where you can use uh, a push button, just press a push button, it will light up an LED, light, the, light emitting diode. For you to be able to do that, you need to understand the individual component, you need to understand the, the basic component that, that will make up the whole system. Because what you are building, you are building a system, no matter how small the circuit diagram looks, no matter how small it is still a system. So a circuit is any setup that you can that a, set, that a current can flow. Any say any closed circuit that a current can flow, that's a circuit. So now looking at this simple circuit that we have there, is a complete circuit because you can have flow of electrons in this particular setup. So now looking at the setup, you understand that you have battery, you have your push button. You have your resistor 330 ohms and you have your led so once you close this this the second the second version of the circuit you see that the, the switch is the push button is closed so once the push button is closed it will allow current to flow and it will complete the circuit because initially if you watch this other side the negative part of the battery is already connected directly to the negative part of the diode so once you close the switch the circuit will be complete so through a resistor to turn on this LED. So actually this is the simulation thing inside Protus. So now this is what we want to do. We want to learn how to build, how to design this kind of circuit. You might be looking at this particular, maybe this thing, this one is very, very simple and very, very minute. But this is the basics of anything you want to do. Bet me if you can do this, what you need is just work and effort you can do whatever you want to do any type of circuit you can design so now we have basic component looking at this circuit now you have resistor there you have battery you have push button you have led so now you need to understand the work of resistor in this circuit you need to understand when you need to put resistor in the circuit you need to understand when you need to put battery when you need to put, put push button so for you to be able to do that 
we want to take each of these components one after the other so we need to take them one after the other explain them if they have types we talk about their type we talk about everything about them at least the basic things that we need to that we need to know before we can start using them to design any segment of our choice is that clear am i too fast okay all right so now you know initially i told you guys that you need to have breadboard you need to have the basic um, electronics component maybe after this class this night or tomorrow morning i will list the basic materials that you need because no matter how small you feel this circuit looks you are supposed to do that on the breadboard make sure that it's working if you're having issues um, I, I planned, um, my plan is, I don't know how, how much time I will have, but each and every one of secrets that we discussed, if I have the time, I will do a video, like a video demonstration, I will design the, I will build the secret on the breadboard, then I can upload the video, maybe I will upload it to my YouTube channel, I will drop the link on the group chat, so that we just go there and each of the classes that we go to, then we go there and see the video, so whenever you are practicing and have issues, you can use the video then, if um, the problem persists, you can now post it on the group chat for other places to help you out. So now, the first component that we have here is the resistor. Now, resistor is a two-terminal electronics component that limits the flow of current in a circuit and also is used for voltage division. So now we have a lot of things that you can use resistor for in a circuit, but the basic um, idea is that this particular component limits the flow of current in a circuit. That is the basic idea. So every other thing can join, but just understand that it is used to limit the flow of current in a circuit. Going back to this our circuit now. Now, this is Protus. That's why I did not actually um, calculate anything before choosing the resistor. I just wanted it to work. You know, initially, yesterday, I told you guys that if you want to um build a circuit if you want to simulate it there is difference between simulating in produce and running the circuit in real life sometimes the, the the choice of component that you do in simulation software if you do that in real life it might damage your system so you should be careful when choosing some value in produce and want to wanting to replicate that same value in real life so now here i have a 9 volt battery and i have push button i have LED and I have resistor. Now, naturally, if you turn on your if without this resistor in real life, without this resistor, you will damage this LED. Without this resistor, so now we have a formula for doing like for calculating the amount of resistor you put here. We'll talk about later. Talk about that later. So now, the work of this resistor in this circuit is to make sure that you don't supply too much current to this. Uh, LED. So that's one of the reasons why I say that you guys need to have this component. So you can actually connect this thing in real life, remove the resistor, and connect 9 volt directly to the LED, and observe whatever that will happen. Then put a resistor, put a smaller resistor, maybe put one key, observe how bright the LED will shine. Then you put 10 key, you observe that too. So going forward, now, I told you guys that it can use to limit the flow of current in a circuit and also it can be used as a voltage divider that is used for division of voltage in a circuit. Now, for instance, say you want um, a voltage of 2.5 in your circuit. Just imagine that. You don't have to think about where you need it. Just forget about that now. With time, you get to know how to use it and get to use it. But now, imagine that you have 2 points. You need 2.5 volts in your circuit and naturally most of the, most of the voltage regulator when we get to voltage regulator you understand you know what they use what what um, voltage regulator is used for in a circuit the types and um, different technologies that we have for voltage regulation but most of the voltage regulator we have the common ones you have 9 volt voltage regulator you have 2.5 sorry 3.3 voltage regulator 
you have nine votes um we don't have anything specific like like two votes or 2.5 naturally we don't have anything like that the common voting regulator that we have we don't have that what you have most times is five votes and 3.3 that's what we use most most of the times in embedded system design so the kind of voltage you'll be seeing there for your sensors your your microcontroller and the rest is mostly 3.3 and 5 volts hope you guys can hear me all right so now let's say we let's say we want 2.5 voltage in our circuit we can actually use voltage divider to achieve that since we already have 5 volts in the circuit and we need 2.5 in the output for whatever we want to use it for we can use voltage divider to do that so we use voltage divider formula this is the formula here v out is equal to r1 over r2 r1 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by v in that is the general formula and in this circuit our R1 is this R3 and our R2 is this R2. So what you do is that you just input those values. You have 10k resistor here, 10k resistor here. You input those values here and you multiply by V8, which is 5 volts. You automatically have your 5.2.5. So you can use it to do whatever you want to use it for. Another example is where now most of um, okay, uh, let me use this particular module as a as an example. GSM module C800. You know, you guys have seen a lot of people that are doing um, um, project. They, they include GSM module. They interface GSM module to their microcontroller or their Arduino board so that maybe at a particular point in time, the module will send SMS to a particular user. So now, if you are using C800, that's the type of a GSM module, it's a 2G module. If you are using C800, you are interfacing it to your microcontroller. You cannot run the transmitter of microcontroller to the receive of the GSM module. Don't don't worry about understanding how this thing works. I just want you to get the concept, like how you can use um, resistor. Forget about the like GSM module that I'm talking about. But just understand the concept. With time, you understand how you can use this principle now to build a circuit that you now include your GSM module or whatever module you want to use but just understand the basic concept now let's say you want to use the jc mode with your microcontroller your microcontroller give usually is five volts you power your microcontroller with five volts maybe your add mega 3 to 8p your add mega 32 your 8051 your peak microcontroller so most of these microcontroller you power them with five volts now you are powering them with five volts which means the pins of the controller will also be given out five volts now you are using another module which is GSM module the maximum voltage that GSM module can allow is 4.4 so which means if you are sending any signal from the GSM modes from the microcontroller to the GSM module it's going to be 5 volts and sending 5 volts to the GSM module might damage the receive line of the GSM module because it can accept maximum of what maximum of 4.2 or 4.4 rather so what you do is that you use voltage divider at the receive line of the GSM mode? You use voltage divider because transmit you are transmitting four point something, and since Arduino can carry up to five, or your microcontroller can carry up to five, sending four point something will not damage, will not do any harm to it. But when you are sending from Arduino to the GSM mode, you will need to include a voltage divider setup so that your in will be the pin of the Arduino or the pin of your microcontroller. While you're out here, which is V out, will go to your GSM module, and this other part will go to ground. So you make choice of your resistor so that at the end of everything, you'll be having four point something or maybe three point something output. Anything you should be having at the output must not exceed four point four. So when making the choice of your resistor, you make your choice of resistor in such a way that it will give you whatever you want. Another example is. ESP01S, that's the Wi Fi module. The maximum voltage to is 3.3. So now, if you want to use it with microcontroller or Arduino that you power with 5 volts, you need to also use a voltage divider setup. So in that case, you, you can choose your R1 to be 2K and your R2 to be 1K. If you do the calculation, you see that you will have the output of 
output of an output of 3.3333. So that will now enter the ESP 01S, which is the Wi Fi module. So now the voltage is safe. So you can call this also level, um, what's it called now? I can't, I can't remember the name now. Um, when, I, when I remember the name, I will tell you more. Understand that you use resistor majorly for what? To limit the flow of current and again for voltage watt division. Are we together? All right. So if you have a question at this point, you can you can you can ask. If you have any question, maybe I'm fast or something. If you have a question, you can ask before we move forward. Am I too fast? Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't you don't know the you, you don't know which of like you don't know I, I didn't get your question well, please network. Okay, what okay, yes, yes, this middle one, this middle one, that's where the two point five will come out out of. That's the V out. The middle one is the V V out, like this point. Hope you can see it. Where my cursor is now, yes, that is the V out. So whatever that is at this top is R2. Whatever that is down is R1. Forget about this my um label. But here is R1, here is R2. Then you plug the put all these values to your formula and you get your V out. So I'm taking my time to explain this concept because when you start building your circuit, you, you are going to be applying all this principle. So if you don't understand that, okay, you need to set you need to set your resistors in this fashion for you to be able to um, divide your voltage, then it's going to be difficult for you to work with it. But if you understand the concept, any any voltage, any output voltage that you need, you can do your calculation to choose your right to choose the right value of resistor to use. So that's the idea behind this. So any other question before we move forward? Okay. Now we have um, types of resistor because um, we've been talking about um, the work of resistor in the circuit. You need to know the type of resistor because it's not all type of resistor that you can use for this setup. So basically, we have a linear and non-linear resistor, like the generally, but um, on a lighter scale, we have fixed and variable resistor. Yes, fixed and variable resistor. So under linear, we have fixed and variable. Now, fixed fixed resistor is the one we are we are familiar with. Everybody, most of us, we've seen fixed resistor. This this particular one. So that is fixed resistor. And this is variable. So under variable, we have different types of variable. We have uh, this blue one, this blue and white. It's called trimmer. Trimmer resistor. T R I M M E R. Why this one is called port potentiometer. Then after that, we have a non-linear. So that's where L D R falls under. I hope we all know that L D R is also a type of resistor. So we are going to talk about, we are going to discuss about LDR in detail later. Then we still have thermistor. Thermistor is also a resistor. So for LDR, the resistance of LDR, okay, let me let me let me um start with this fix. For a fixed resistor, the resistance is fixed. If it's 1k, it's 1k. Though in some certain temperature conditions, the resistance can vary a little bit. That's why you have something that is called tolerance. So once we get to the table, the color code table of a resistor, we'll talk about that. But know that a fixed resistor, if it's 1K, it's 1K. Unless in some conditions that you it will slightly change, it can decrease or it can increase. Maybe you have 999. If it's 1K before, maybe you can have 999 ohms. You can have um, 1.01K ohms. That is 1,000 plus ohms. So it will 
vary within a specific range that is the tolerance then for variable resistor we can vary the resistance you can vary the resistance in the sense that if it's 10k you understand that a variable resistor we have three legs so now let me use this guy to explain variable resistor a variable resistor you have like two resistors inside one that is the simplest way to do that to explain that you have two resistors inside one resistor which is a variable resistor so if the resistor is 10k is 10k you cannot vary you cannot the, the variation cannot exceed 10k but if you are varying it this upper one this upper one that is the r2 you can vary it to be 2k and the down one will be 8k but the summation must be 10k so if it's 10k variable resistor you can vary the resistance from edge to edge so if this guy is 5k this other one should be 5 if this guy is 6k this other one should be 4 if this guy is 1 this other one should be 9 so that is why it's called variable because you can vary the resistance of each of the end so non-linear i've said that before you have your ldr ldr is light dependent resistor so naturally for this one the resistance if you have 10 you have 10 if you have 5 you have 5 you can vary with whatever you want to for position meter you can vary through the handle for trimmer you can use a screwdriver or anything that will that can be able to enter this small hole you place it there you vary the resistance but for these two for ldr the res resistance you can vary the resistance by introducing sunlight and also darkness so the resistance is inversely proportional to the amount of light falling on the ldr what do i mean if light intensity is increasing on the ldr the resistance will decrease if light intensity is decreasing the resistance will increase so that's how ldr works later we are going to use it to build a circuit for better understanding are we guys following are you guys following all right all right so for ntc ntc means negative temperature coefficient that's a thermistor we have basically two types you have ptc and we have ntc ntc is the ne negative temperature coefficient and ptc is positive temperature coefficient so now for ntc remember that for ldr the resistance will vary when the light intensity is increasing or decreasing but for ntc what affects the resistance is heat heat so you can use it as a temperature sensor i recently um, designed a project i designed a device i think i've, I've delivered the, the, the work now i use ntc as a temperature sensor though i did not calibrate it but i use it to detect heat because it's a fire alarm system so if the um if the resistance okay if i use it ntc which is negative temperature coefficient if the heat is increasing the resistance will be dropping but if it's positive if the heat is increasing the sorry if the temperature is increasing the heat will be increasing i want you to understand the difference between atc and ptc atc is negative temperature coefficient and thermistor heat affects the resistance so if there is heat if you introduce heat the, temp the, the resistance of the thermistor will vary heat is increasing which is the temperature too the resistance will be dropping that's ntc as the heat is increasing the resistance will be dropping but for ptc as the heat is increasing the resistance will also be increasing that's ntc now going forward we have color code table resistor color code now you, you should be able to identify a resistor when you see one and also be able to identify the value very very important if you see a resistor you should be able to identify it and secondly you should be able to tell the value because most um most, most of the times majority of us we find it difficult to identify a resistor but you should be able to 
tell that this is 1k once you see 1k you should be able to tell that this is 2k once you see 2k this is 330 ohms once you see 330 ohms at a glance it should not take you up to five seconds to be able to do that so now we have this table we have this basic table black is zero one is brown red is two orange is three down to gray and white then finally gold and silver now this first band is the first color so the first color here you identify that as the first band the second band is the second color you see a resistor then the third one is the multiplier you can call it third, third band so you can call it multiplier then why the fourth one is the tolerance so now i'll use the resistor to illustrate that hope you can see this particular resistor right hope, hope you can see that okay well you can see my screen right you can see the all right so now this is a resistor so this is a resistor the first one is the first band second band and third band or the multiplier then the one that is Strictly, um, strictly, um, slightly at the end. The one that is slightly at the end is the tolerance. Most of the times, the tolerance is separated from the main band. So, um, most of the times, the tolerance is far away from the three major bands. Now. What you do is that the first band remains the number. Now, these are our first band. This is the first band. So, now since we have red, the red will be two. The second one is violet. Violet is seven. You write your seven. Then the third one is orange color. And multiplier here for orange, the third band, which is the multiplier, is times 10 raised to the power three. That is this times 10 raised to the power 3. So now you write your first and second band, then you multiply it with the multiplier or your third band. So that gives you the value of your resistor. So in this case, we have 27 times 10 raised to the power 3, and 10 raised to the power 3 is 1000. So in that case, it's 27 watt k ohms. So now the tolerance, now what the tolerance means. Now, for tolerance, most of the resistors, you see that the last band is the tolerance. So you, here we have silver, right? The color is silver. So you go to the tolerance column. You see that the tolerance is plus or minus 10%. So what that means is that initially, remember I told you that for fixed resistor, the resistance can slightly increase or it can slightly decrease. So now, maybe in some setting temperature, if it increases, this tolerance means that it cannot exceed more than this 10%. So any allowance you want to give this resistor, or maybe this resistor will give you, will be within 10%, either positive or negative. Now, 10% of 27K is what? 10% of 27K should be what? Hope you guys are following. Are we together? I can't hear you. Okay. Exactly. 2700. So, which means the value of this resistor can be 27,000 plus or minus 2700. That's what that the, the this um, particular value means. This 27k ohms plus or minus 10%. So 27,000 
plus 2,700. So the, the value can be 29,700. Sorry, yeah, 29,700. When you do plus, you can be 27,900 ohms, or it can be 24,300 ohms. So within that range. So if you pick up your multimeter to measure the value, later I will show you guys how to measure. I will do a video to show you guys how to measure your um, resistor with your multimeter because you don't just put your knob anywhere you want. The knob is the um, the rotary part that you move. You want to test your test anything with your multimeter. You don't just put your knob anywhere if you want to measure your resistor. You need to put it at a specific place when measuring. So now. As I said before, your res this res the resistance of this resistor can vary within 27k plus or minus 10%. So I would say that that's the first component that we need for our circuit. Remember, we want to go through the basic uh, what is it called? Basic components that we need for building our circuit. Now, resistor is the number one, and we've established the fact that in a circuit. Resistor can act as a current limiter, number one. Also, you can use it for what? Voltage division. That's another work of a resistor. And we have basic two types of resistor. We have linear and we have non-linear. Other linear, we have fixed and we have variable. Then other non-linear, we have ATC and LDR, ETC. We have other types. And we've gone to the... the uh, resistor color code to be able to identify resistor and know their value so i won't say that i will reduce the the font so that you can be able to see all the color code so now i want somebody to tell me if i have a resistor with the following color code i want you guys to tell me the value of the resistor can we all hear me all right so if i have um resistor with the following uh, color code yellow violet brown what should be the value of the resistor yellow violet brown Four seventy what? Okay. Four seventy, right? So it's as easy as that. So now the second component we want to we want to talk about is the capacitor. The capacitor. So this guy is a passive electronics component that stores electric charge. That's the basic definition of um the capacitor it stores electric charge but most of the times in our circuit now the basic circuit that we'll be going that we're going to be building because the first major this thing that we are going to build we're going to be building power supply because in any design you do in any system you are building you, you must have the power without power the system cannot work so you should be able to choose the right component it's not just de designing a power supply and building a power supply you should know why you are using a particular power supply now it's fine to go online and look for design but it's also good that when you see those designs you should understand why each of the component is there so that if you want to change the design to suit whatever you want to do you can be able to do that without struggle because most times people will go online and copy designs then after building the whole system it will not work so we have this kind of issues because most at times people don't understand what they are copying. I'm not saying it's bad to go online and source for sake. It's fine to go there and look for sake. Then, but you should be able to understand what you are copying and um, redesign it to, to suit your application. I can design a circuit, maybe a, a timer circuit, to give me five seconds delay. If you understand the circuit, you can also redesign it to give you uh, maybe 10 seconds, 10 seconds delay, or maybe 20 seconds delay, or maybe one second delay. 
So that's the essence. So you should be able to understand whatever you are copying, each of the components. You should be able to understand so that if you see this component there, you can imagine, you can visualize the reason why the component is there. So now, in most of the circuit we are going to be building, we are going to be using capacitor, either as a um, storage component or maybe for filtration, like in your power supply, use it to filter, filter noise. Say you are building a power supply from um, AC source, after you must have used your transformer to step down the voltage, the voltage again now pass through a rectifier, you rectify which is conversion conversion of um, AC to DC. You need to filter even before you take the voltage to the regulator to re regulate it down to your desired output voltage. You need to filter. Then after the regulation, you also need to do some filtration again. So we do that basically or most times you use capacitor, though you can use um, inductors too, but most of the times you use capacitor for that. Now we have uh, basically two um, types of capacitor that we are familiar with. We have the polarized and non-polarized. So for polarized, which is electrolytic, you are you, you should be conscious of the terminal. When, you, when we talk about polarized, it means that it has a polarity, positive and negative. So you don't just fix your capacitor there, you should be conscious of the polarity. But for non-polarized, you can turn it anyway. Like for instance, if any of us have seen a below board, close to the crystal, close to the crystal, you see two capacitors there. 22 people for a capacitor, that was the value, the um, data sheet recommended. So those two values, they are um, non-polarized capacitors, those two capacitors most of the times, non-polarized. If you go to the sheet of most of um, the microcontroller, close to the crystal, you have the two capacitors. There. Those two capacitors most of the time they are non-polarized uh, capacitors, which is a uh, ceramic capacitor. So those capacitors, they don't have polarity. You can put it any way, any round, it will work. Whether you turn this um, edge to ground, the other one to ground, it will still work fine. The way the resistor is non polarized, you know, terminals of resistors, anywhere you put it, it will still work fine. So, that's the two basic um, types of capacitor we have. And then you should be conscious of that in your circuit diagram. In your circuit diagram, basically, you use this curve edge to show the negative part of the polarized capacitor, why the straight line is for the positive. So now, in capacitor, we have compression. You need to do compression because um, let's say you have a circuit. Maybe someone set a circuit diagram for you and say, okay, help me build this circuit. And in the circuit diagram, you are seeing 0 0.01 UF. But you went to the market and um, after looking for 0 0.01, 0 0.01 UF, can you, can you guys hear me? Hope you can hear me. I want to be sure. All right, all right, all right. Now you went to the market to get 0 0.01 UF, and the seller now tells you that we don't have 0 0.01 UF. It's not in um, electrolytic format, we don't have it. And most of the times here, I'm not talking about where you want to order abroad or maybe where you want to order from any online platform. Most times it's, it will be specified, they will give you the value in most, most of the time, they will give you the value in pico and they will also give you in microfarad. But most of, most of the times here, if you go to a local seller, you need to tell them the value they know. If you don't tell them the value they know, they will tell you they don't have the capacitor. So you should be able to uh, know how to convert this capacitor from one particular unit to the other. Now, most of the times, this uh, ceramics capacitor, they are rated in picofarad. But this is not electrolytic. Most of the times, or all the times, you see the value written in microfarad. Let me zoom this um, 
Papa is going to see if you can, you guys can see me. Don't know if you guys can see the value. I have 1000 UF 35 volts here. That's the value of this. 1000 UF 35 volts. Then for this, I can't see anything here. But most of the times, they are rated in picofarad. So now, how do we convert that? We need to know this basic um, conversion table. So 1 UF is the same thing as 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad. And 1 millifarad is 10 raised to the power minus 3 farad. 1 nanofarad, 10 raised to the power minus 9 farad. Why um, 1, 1 picofarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 12 farad. So now, say you want to buy capacitor of 0.01 F UF and you don't have the electrolytic capacitor but maybe you can also fit in the ceramic or the non electrolytic capacitor there so you need to do the conversion then go to the market to tell them okay look at the value I want so in that case since you know that now I want to convert this 0.01 UF to picofarad so what what you do is that the value you multiply it by times 10 to the power minus 6 then times 12 because of this picofarad here naturally you can do the mathematics manually and get your value but this is the easiest way to do that you multiply the value you have here multiply by times 10 to the power 6 that you are converting this guy to farad because time microfarad is raised to the power minus 6 so when you multiply by times 10 to the power minus 6 you've already converted to farad then you multiply by 10 to the power 12 to convert it to pico. So if you convert to pico, you have 10 times 10 to the power 5. Are we good? Hope you guys can hear me. Okay, now, so so this 10 times 10 raised to the power 5, if you express that, what it means is 100000, which is what? 100 watts. 100k right which is 100k so the way you relate that to pico when you want to rate your capacitor you write one zero remember we have five zero naturally we have five zero so you write one you now write one zero then this the four zero will now be written as four so if i see this i worried i will know that it's 10 times 10 raised to the power five that's what it means so we have 10, 10 times 10 raised to the power five here but if you want to express it in the format that, that will be written on the capacitor, what you do is that this is 10 times 10 to the power 5, which means 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 zeros. Right? That is 100 key. 5 zeros, 100 key. So to express that in, in, um, in form that you will see written on the capacitor, but once you bring most of these ceramic, ceramic capacitors, you see the name, uh, sorry, the value. You see 104, you see 102, you see 103. So this 10 times 10 raised to the power 5 means 104. So this other one, two, we have 10 raised to the power 4, it means 103. Are we good? All right. So um, what if? So what if I have a? What if I have the? capacitor let me let me look for the value that um that will not follow this particular format so let me look for another value what was the value I, what, what if i have one picofarad what should be the value in microfarad minus six right all right, do anybody have a um, different answer? So it should be um, one, times, one times 10 is the power minus 6. So that should be the value in microfarad. So you should be conversant with convert, this conversion so that maybe you go to the market, you don't have 0 0.01 UF. You should know that it's the same thing as what? 
So um, the next um, component I'm going to talk about is diode. So diode is a pH junction semiconductor material that allows the flow of current just in one direction. So it acts as its one-way switch for current. It also it allows current to flow easily in one direction, but severely restricts current from flowing in the opposite direction. So now diode is very very important in a circuit. Once we get to power supply design, I will, I will explain. I will explain to you guys how you can use four diode and the working principle to convert AC to DC. So you use diode for that, and also you use diode to restrict the movement of that is the major um, definition of major work of diode to restrict the flow of current in one direction. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, this is a symbol of a diode. Is a symbol of a diode. This is a symbol of a diode. Now, if you have a positive charge here, or if you have the if you have your, your battery, your two ta you, um, your terminals of two terminals of your battery, the positive and the negative, and you have five volt at this point, this positive part, which is the VCC, this current that you you incited the will pass through this diode to allow it to pass but if you reverse bias this diode what i mean by reverse bias is you are now putting positive at the negative terminal and negative at the positive terminal so at this negative terminal if you connect your positive this thing here it will not allow voltage to pass or it will not allow current to pass you can only connect diode in reverse manner just only one condition when you want to use a diode for voltage regulation and that's the zener diode it's only in that situation that you connect diode in reverse manner or you want to use it to block the flow of current you can connect it in reverse manner now i use this switch to represent this um diode when it's forward bias so if it's forward bias positive is connected here negative is connected here this diode will act as a switch so it will close and it will allow whatever that is here to pass to this other side but in this case if you reverse bias it like putting positive here and putting negative here it will act as open switch so which means current cannot pass so that's exactly what i explained here so now we have um, different types of um, diode. We have zener diode. So basically, we use zener diode for for um, voltage regulation. So you have 5.1 zener diode. You have 9.0, 9.1 9 zener diode. So you use it for voltage regulation. So just that one of the downside of zener diode is that it cannot source a lot of current. That is another problem. So it cannot source a lot of current. When you need um, a, a lot of current at your output, by using it to regulate, you, you might not get whatever you, you are looking for. So we have power diode. These are the type of diode that you can use for um, for voltage uh, for rectification rather. So you can use it for rectification to convert AC to DC. Then we have shocky diode. We have photo diode. We have light emitting diode. Your LED is a type of diode, but it's light emitting diode. So now we've gone to uh, we've talked about um, three basic components. Now I will not want to go further because I would like you guys to build some few circuits. If you don't have, if you don't, I don't know if you are, if you guys have the um, tools in your laptop, in your laptops. Maybe if you don't have the components yet, you can use your tools to simulate. How many of us? How many of us can lay our hands on these three components that we talked about today: the diode, the capacitor, and the um, resistor? Are we together? You can. You have those basic components, right? 
Okay, you have to do this. All right, all right. So now, um, but Clothes might not be able to give you exactly what I want you guys to do now. Now, I want you to um, to build this particular circuit, that, the one you are seeing here. You build this circuit and you change this value of resistor from 330 ohms to 1K, from 1K to 10K. You observe the intensity of light you are having at this LED side for you to understand the work the working principle of this resistor how do you resist or limit the flow of current so you change this value from 330 to 1k from 1k to 10k and see the output then after that you build this voltage divider if you build this voltage divider you can use 2k here use 1k here then put your 5 volts here. This is the ground, which is the negative terminal of your battery. Negative terminal of your battery will go here. If you have a 9 volt battery, you can still use. Then you measure your output for you to see if your manual calculation will be the same thing as what your circuit will give you, or maybe approximately the same thing, but because it might not give you exactly what because your calculation will give you the exact value, but in real life, it might not give you the exact value. Or to be very very close so your calculation can give you 3.33 but your output might like your real life output might be giving you 2.4 sorry 3.4 or maybe 3.39 or thereabouts so i want you guys to do that this particular one then do this setup measure your voltage at the output you um, maybe touch this resistor change the values do the calculation manually have your value then Use your multimeter also to test. Hope oh, um, we can test voltage using multimeter. Can we be able to do that?